Hey guys, welcome back. And I want to talk about Halo Infinite and how the the greatest, one of the greatest multiplayer shooters has fallen. Let's get into it. Now we all know Halo Infinite started way up here and it's just continued to go down and down and down as the months go on. These people realized this game was just it, it wasn't ready. It was not ready for launch. And I know that they got the multiplayer for free. Um, it was a surprise launch. You don't, you don't have to pay any money for it. But the game just... The game wasn't finished. Even for live service... You know, as a live service game. If we were to look at that. It still fails to even remotely get close to a lot of successful other live service games. And I think the management behind Halo Infinite fucked up because they wanted to rush this out right before the holiday season you know get people to you know download it start playing it and buy microtransactions which i'll get into later in the video but once again uh publishers and heads of companies pushing games out before they're finished is ultimately ultimately leading to their downfall and this has happened so many times you would think these ceos and these uh uh, companies would understand not to do that but they they don't listen they don't learn and they're chasing an almighty dollar and yeah before anybody gets into it i understand companies job is to make money but they only it seems like com gaming companies in particular look at the short term instead of the long term and that's not a good business model um because of your because of the rushed lazy design choices they may put into this game this game is dying and even the release of season two which just dropped a couple days ago is not going to save it now everyone everyone understands uh the problems with halo infinite um skill progression is not there everything is progressed by the battle pass and um, challenges which the challenges for this game are broken there are a lot of challenges that you can complete them but they don't seem to give you any credit towards your battle pass which is the only way to unlock um cosmetic uh changes which i don't know if you guys remember but playing halo 3 and halo infinite um all that all those games you know you unlocked armor pieces by completing the campaign and by uh completing you know playing the multiplayer and that's how it should be i know i understand this is a free-to-play game they gotta make their money but you know, there's a difference between making money and price gouging, or just ridiculously filling this game with microtransactions. And we'll get to those in a little bit, just to show the, the craziness. Uh, first and foremost, I know if you guys have seen my, uh, some of my previous videos, I hate live service games. I think they are horrible for the gaming industry. They're not consumer friendly, and I get it, you know. Their goal is to make money because the game is free. But see, I subscribe to that previous you know, that old school mythology of, uh, not mythology, <laughs> um, I am someone who bought my game for $60, got a campaign and a multiplayer all in one, you know, and that's how it should be, but companies have to price gouge and have to nickel and dime you for every piece of content they, they release. They don't want you to have a full game at launch no 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 they want to spoon feed it to you and little little pe little bit by bit and that's why halo infinite is dying because they released a bare bones content that had the least amount of content of any halo game and i think when it released it was eight maps three modes you couldn't select which uh mode you wanted to play um couldn't select the maps you preferred to play on um, everything, like I said, was tied to the battle pass. And even even though they had said previously in, in, in interviews, we are not going to lock a majority of the content behind a paywall. That is bullshit. I've been playing this game for about 10, 15 hours. Uh, and I know in the long scheme of things, that's not a lot. But when, I first, when this first came out, I played for about five hours and unlocked maybe a visor color. Um, that was it. And the 
the fact that like all the good cosmetic dam uh co not damage all the good cosmetic um costumes armor pieces emblems uh, visor colors effects everything is locked behind a paywall all the, you get some little ones you know if you don't want to buy the battle pass which i rarely ever buy a battle pass for any game you if you don't buy it it's an you could uh level up the battle pass and unlock maybe one or two things in a span of like five to ten hours but if you buy the battle pass you will lock multitude more things in that same amount of time it actually shows you hey if you had bought the battle pass you would have also received this item and this item how about you just let me have the item you know i'm not saying you can't have a micro a transaction store but if I love the game, and I love what they're doing with the game, I have no problem supporting it by giving you money. But if I feel like I'm being nickel and dimed, and I feel like I'm being pressured to buy stuff because that's I'm not getting it any other way, then no, I'm not going to give you any money. I actually just dropped... I bought the Battle Pass for a free-to-play game that came out on PS5 called Blood Hunt. After a couple of matches, I loved the game, and I'm like, you know what, the Battle Pass is 10 bucks. Cool, I'll give you 10 bucks because the gameplay was fun and it didn't feel like it was like pushing me to do that. Um, and with this game, I after a couple hours, I had no desire to give them any money, especially after looking at the microtransaction store, which, you know what, let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is an older article, but to be honest with you, nothing really has changed. I just looked at the store the other day. So kind of give an example. Everything in the store can be bought with um, silver or like the some silver-esque type of um, currency um, to get 500 p 500 credits is five dollars uh, what can you get for five dollars on this screen you can buy chippy blue team icons from halo 5 and two uh, boost and swap packs which are used to swap your challenges around in case you don't want to do those challenges which i think is stupid but um so you can buy little things so five bucks no armor pieces um for ten dollars you get one thousand credits which if you look back here you can buy a helmet for one thousand so that means ten dollars for a helmet or you can spend twenty dollars and get the at the time the zavetta armor set so an armor set is twenty dollars in real currency and the, the thing I hate about live service games and how they relate, how they're pr pretty much freemium mobile games, is that there's no way to earn this uh, this currency in game. I could play for a hundred hours straight, complete all these challenges, and I will never earn a single credit. You have to use real currency, and that is stupid. And like I get it, you they have to make money, but you know what? Twenty dollars for an armor piece, for, for sorry, an armor set is ridiculous twenty dollars and then you'll see what they do here is uh for example they'll sell stuff for 1500 like the uh the color blue for your warthog and mongoose and there's no option for 1500 so you have to, the way they do this, obviously people know this, the way they do um, credit packs for any type of freemium game is they always give you an odd number where if you, it incentivizes, incentivizes you to buy more, but you'll always have an odd amount. You'll never be able to perfectly use all of your currency and it just it'll always sit there looking at you like, hey, you're going to spend me because you feel like it's a waste. Um... The microtransaction store is absolutely ridiculous. It has way too many... It's a mix of really cool content, really cool armor pieces and effects, and a lot of really stupid ones like cat ears. Um, and the prices are just ridiculous. Uh, an armor set should never cost more than $5, in my opinion. You know? It's... <sighs> I could go into a rant about um, live service games, but I've already done that before. Now, the thing with live service games, when, well, I guess with this type of game, is the fact that you people that don't want to spend actual money are barely getting any content. Like, they're not unlocking armor pieces. Um, their, their skill does not, you know, make them progress further. 
It's all about these horrible challenges. And people don't like that. People who grew up playing Halo, we don't like that type of mentality. We like just getting a full game at release and I'm playing it. The better you do, the more points and, um, and experience you get, and then you can unlock content. That is how we, who grew up with Halo, prefer it. This is all for the newer age of players who, you know, grew up with microtransaction and battle passes like Fortnite. And I'm sorry, people that play Fortnite are not going to come and play this because that's not what they grew up on. You, they looked at the wrong target audience, but we're going to look at the player count here. All right, so on Steam, um, back when it first dropped in November 2021, the game had about average players of 102,000. I, and I think peak players, yeah, peak players, it was about 20, uh, tw two, uh, <laughs> ew, can I talk today? Uh, 256,000 players. A month later, that dropped by over 100,000 players. When people started realizing that the game just had no content, the game, the game's progression was terrible. And... There was just, there's no reason to play it. You didn't feel, you didn't feel fulfilled and accomplished while playing it. Cat, can I help you? I'm making a video, I know. So he only wants attention <laughs> when I'm busy, but. And as you can see, it's almost like it drops in half each month. And with the release of season two, it did bring people back. And I'll admit, after months of not playing the game, about a couple weeks ago, I did hop back on and I have been enjoying it. The, the combat alone. I'm so mad though when I spend so long trying to complete, you know, level up and complete challenges and I get a visor color. Or like I got like, a weird color for my armor which I'm not a huge fan of but like I need to use it because it's, it differentiates my character from the others. Um, it's going back up but there are even problems with season two. Uh, the new game mode which essentially is a take on a battle royale it, it's broken. Like, when you lose, you can either uh, uh, watch the rest of the match play out, or you can leave, and it even says, you will not lose your experience. Guess what? When you leave the match before it's done, you do not keep your experience. The game is literally broken. It essentially comes down to Halo just not being ready. The game is not designed, in my opinion, it was not designed for free-to-play. And not even just talk about the multiplayer, you know. The single player, in my opinion, is awful. I do not believe every single game needs an open world. I do not believe Halo needed an open world. I've tried to play it. I've gotten about five, six hours in. Um, and it just... It doesn't work, in my opinion. I don't enjoy the open world when it comes to Halo. Certain, Like I said, certain games do it well. Uh, Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring, um, those games are great, but Halo is not one of them. Halo, in my opinion, is best when it is tight quarters, a corridor shooter, um, or a sandbox shooter, you know? Not this, and you know, maybe those things are connected, but my point is, this game I just doesn't feel like it was made for old school Halo fans, you know? It was made for the new age of players, and... When you make a game for a new audience and forget to take into account your older audience, your game is going to fail. Especially when there's so many free-to-play games out there nowadays. You have to do something that differentiates yourself from everyone and says, Hey, you know what? I could go play Fortnite, Apex, Blood Hunt, um, any uh, Battle Royale game. I want to play Halo. Well, not Battle Royale game. Or a free-to-play game. I want to play Halo. And Halo has not done that. Um, the game continues to be glitchy. The game continues to be just, it's unpolished, it's unfinished, and it needed more time. Um, and one uh, last thing is that the game, there's no point of buying the game physically on disc. I own every single Halo game on disc. The only one I don't have and is Halo Infinite, and I will never buy Halo Infinite on disc because the game isn't even on the disc. You People that got the game early thought they could try playing the campaign before it came out. No, the the campaign was is something you have to download. The, the disc is essentially a key 
to download the game to your console. Which, at that point, the game's already free on Game Pass. There's no reason to buy a physical disc. Ever. And that's sad. Like, I will, of the six mainline Halo games, I will never own them all. Because I'm not going to buy a disc if it, all it is is a key to download the game. Because what if the... What if it uh, goes down one day? Then I'm screwed. Anyway, that's just... Halo, I want Halo to succeed, but at this point... Halo is is going to die out. And people have been saying that 343 is absolutely just horrible with the franchise. And to be honest, I think they are not the best choices for the Halo license. I actually enjoyed Halo 4. Um, the campaign was okay. The multiplayer, I actually really enjoyed. Halo 5, I bought an Xbox One, specifically the Halo 5 edition. Spent like $600 when it came out because I wanted to buy a Halo, a, a new Xbox specifically for Halo. And I beat Halo in five hours and I was completely just upset and disappointed of everything I played and how I just wasted $600 to get the premium edition console and a terrible Halo game. And... I should have known that was the downfall. But instead of, like, learning from their mistakes, they learned in some ways with the game focusing more on Master Chief, but also failed on other ways. Obviously, with the game not even being on the disc, multiplayer being absolutely broken, um, they have made strides, but it is sl is too, it's coming out too slowly. One thing they did say, though, is that they are trying to do a better work-life balance, and I actually love that. That is awesome. That is great for 3 or 4 3. And it made me think of something. What if the reason why there ha there's not a whole lot of content coming out and the fact that this season is six months at a time when most seasons are about two to three months is they're not crunching their, their employees to make content. You work your eight hour shift, you go home. That's why I think it should, how it should be in any workplace. But if. Is this possibly the reason why we're not getting a whole lot of content? Is because they're not being crunched? If that's the case, this sets a very weird precedence. That, yeah, I don't want employees to ever feel like they have, you know, burnout from work. Um, and they feel like they're spending their whole lives at work. But if this is the way things are going to be, to be honest... I'd rather have that instead of employees feeling incredibly depressed over their work, you know? Now, this could just be from poor management and poor employees just not understanding how to make a game or designing it in a timely manner. But if I'm also not going to be as upset if it's because, yeah, you know, this is what happens when you have more of a work-life balance where you work your 40 to 45 hours a week. Um, but, hey, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, are you still playing Halo Infinite? Um, what do you think they need to do, need to do in order to save the game? Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.